Hi everybody. In today's video, I'm going to compare Grammarly free versus Grammarly premium version, right? So I'd been a customer of Grammarly free version for almost five years and I never really felt the need to go sign up for a premium subscription until I actually tried the premium subscription. Then I realized that there's a lot of benefits that you get from the premium subscription. So my goal in today's video is to really just take you through as an experiment what the experience looks like in the premium version versus the free version. What extra features you get, what a Grammarly analysis looks like for the same piece of text in a free account as an, a paid account. So we're, we're going to look at that. I'm going to walk you through some of the features and hopefully by the end of it, you should be able to make a decision if you should continue using Grammarly free or should you buy a paid version. All right. So as an experiment, let's start out. So I have this article about print advertising st statistics. I'm just going to kind of take this article and put this in the free one first, right? So I'll go in here. This is the free account. All right. I'm not in there. Now let's look at the premium account, right? So this is my Grammarly premium account. Overall, the user interface looks the same as you can see. Now let's see how many suggestions it gives versus the free one. Same piece of text here. And the first thing it starts is, you know, it asks you for like your goals. I'll get to that in a bit, but so overall it's given, what's most interesting is that first of all, in the Grammarly premium, I think something is not working. Let's try again. I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to paste it in here. All right. So the first thing it asks you is what are your goals? for the piece of content. This is not a free feature, it's a paid feature, and it's gonna give tailored writing suggestions, right? So a lot of my writing usually is business focused. It's usually to inform readers, it's expert level content, and I usually like to keep a neutral formal tone, okay? And I can always set it as default, but I'm just gonna stick with this. Now, as you can see, right, it obviously shows a lot more suggestions. What's more interesting about the premium version is that, first of all, you can make bulk edits right away, right? So it's showing these five suggestions and I can just accept them all in, all in one go. So I just clicked on this and boom, all of these suggestions have been, the corrections have been done instantly. Then it's going to obviously show removing redundancy, rephrase sentences, choosing a synonym, choosing a different word. It'll just give a lot of interesting suggestions. And you can see, right, with just accepting the bulk edits, my overall score went from 85 to 87. While this is not really visible in the free one, right? So in free, you have to first of all go in one by one. All of these suggestions that were there, I basically accepted them in one go over there, but it's not showing all of the other premium suggestions. It is, however, showing you like the overall score and the correctness and clarity, but there's not a lot to fix in here. Worse, there's something like they see a 30, 135% increase in the response rates. Now, if I click on this, it says that there's an article usage problem, so I can click on this and Boom, it's fixed. Did it show in here? Let's have a look. It did show this here. All right. Now let's look at, so these are all the, the, the red ones are all about, these are all incorrect grammatical errors and you can basically fix these. The blue ones are text that is not very clear, right? So for example, this one, in terms of, Print advertising offers a staggering 112% return on investment in terms of response rates from consumers, right? And they're like regarding the response rates of consumers. Now, this is, again, you can, you can use it to make your sentences more concise, but you can also reject these suggestions. So, 
for me, I don't really like it, so I can dismiss it, right? 90% of print ads are open text engaging, right? So they're sick of being bombarded with ads. And now let's see what this suggestion is. Advertisements. The word ads appears repeatedly in the second say using a synonym in its place. Fine, makes sense. I'm going to use that. And according to them, the delivery seems pretty good. So all of that stuff is in there. Right. And you can see my overall score basically increased to 89. Right. And you can also obviously see the score based on readability and vocabulary and word count, all of that. Now in the free version, again, you know, you don't get a lot of options, right? Like there's not a lot of suggestions on clarity. There are in fact no suggestions on clarity. I mean, just a few at the beginning, and then obviously you gotta pay for it. Not a lot of suggestions on the engagement or the delivery. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So th this was test number one. This was more about like how many suggestions can Grammarly give of uh, premium versus free. So premium gave about 33 uh, suggestions while the free version gave about seven. And yeah, so I think in this case, the premium version wins over free because it can definitely make your writing a lot better and also save time with all of the bulk edits, right? Now let's take a look at the second thing. So Grammarly Premium also provides plagiarism checks, right? So if I want to, let's say, check this for plagiarism, I'm just going to click on this here. And by the way, Premium has unlimited plagiarism checks. So you can do it anytime you want. And it is probably the best plagiarism check out there right so it says that four percent of my content is plagiarized and it'll basically find the exact matches in there right so i find this is a very cool feature especially when i'm working with a lot of writers and they might be sending me content that already exists i can see it right away and when i go in here plagiarism check is actually a premium feature so in this case, again, the premium version definitely works. I mean, the premium version is worth buying just for the plagiarism check. The third test we're going to look at is can, how can premium help with like writing or like adding to it, right? So they basically have this new tool called Grammarly Go, which is basically for AI text generation uh, to help you with that. And I think they use chat GPT or some AI tech. So, for example, first of all, you can set your particular voice, your tone of content, right, which is not available uh, in the free version. This helps you keep the, I guess, the tone of your content consistent. This is especially useful if you have a blog and you can follow a similar style. But more interesting is it can give you some ideas for improvement, right? So, for example, in here, I'm just going to ask it, give me ideas for improvement. And it's like, hey, add more examples, emphasize the benefits of print advertising, all of that, right? Another thing that you can try here is, all right, so I'm just gonna ask it to maybe write us a blog intro, right? Write a introduction that's mentioned rather than words. Yeah, so it created something like this. I thought it would basically take the intro from here, but I forgot that I need to let it know exactly. So maybe what I can do here is I can just take this and, and paste it in here and be like, improve this blog intro. Let me try that. All right, let's see how this goes. All right. So... Anyway, I generally think that the Grammarly Go is more like a nice to have than a must have. And I think it's still nascent or in, 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 in beta. So I wouldn't worry too much about it, right? So in this case, I think it's probably better to get just get the free version for that. And then the other things that what Grammarly Premium can also do is it can also check for citations. So if you've got any particular citations, it can. if you've mentioned a statistic or something, it can 
find the exact source for it, all of that. The other thing you can also do is you can use Grammarly within Google Docs and then basically run your pages and check in here, right? So let me just show you real quick. All right. So it basically checked, it found all of the suggestions and now you can just go in and start working on them, right? And this is what the interface looks like, right? Again, a lot more suggestions versus the free version, which is where it really shines. The other aspects of the free, sorry, the premium version is that first of all, you can create a personal dictionary where basically you can add words to your personal dictionary, which you use often. Sometimes maybe it's a brand term. Sometimes it's perhaps a feature that you use again and again. You don't have to explain to Grammarly that this is not an error. You can review and accept suggestions in Google Docs, which I just showed you. And then one really cool feature of Grammarly Premium are the weekly writing stats. Let me just show you what that looks like. So it basically gives you this just awesome weekly statistics where it shows you that, hey, how productive were you versus other Grammarly users? How many words did you analyze? How many alerts were shown? How many more unique words did, did I use versus Grammarly users? What tone was like, what is the most used tone in the content, right? Just to give you an idea of where your writing is going. It'll also show you if it's detected any new tones. It also shows you the top three mistakes. And this is very helpful just to know that if the writers, if you work with a bunch of writers where they're mostly going wrong, so you can basically edit your blog writing guidelines. Or if you write the content yourself, you can see where you're really going wrong and then fix it. So I really find this like a very personal improvement style post. I, I really like these weekly stats. And this, again, is only available in Grammarly Premium and not available on Grammarly Free. Right? So just to summarize the difference between free and premium and wh what triggered me to buy premium was that, first of all, the unlimited plagiarism checks, right? Grammarly's plagiarism checker is the best plagiarism checker out there. It has the widest database. It just very accurately checks that, right? And because it's unlimited, it makes it worth it. The second thing is that you get a lot more suggestions. So you can actually make your content really, really well written. And you can actually make bulk edits, right? So for the premium suggestions, I think it's it's also worth buying the Grammarly Premium version. And the last thing is the weekly stats. And this is more just a way to improve your writing and show you how your writing team is performing, what tones they're using, what are the common errors they're doing. And it just works really well for like introspection. And for these particular reasons, I'd say premium is worth it, right? Now, who should buy Grammarly Premium, right? So if you're somebody whose writing is not like a full-time thing or you're just a beginner, right? I think Grammarly free version is pretty great. It definitely gets your content to a certain level. It checks for certain edits. And if you're the one who's writing the content on your personal blog, maybe, um, I think Grammarly free should work just fine. But if you're, let's say, blog manager that works with a lot of writers, or if you're a blogger, with just a lot of traffic and you're just very serious about your whole writing career or if you're a full-time writer, I think you should definitely invest in a Grammarly premium subscription. I think it costs something like $12 per month. It might be different in different geographies. So you better check on that. But for $12 per month, the three major things you get is just the, the plagiarism checker, the, 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 the weekly stats with the feedback on like how your writing was and premium suggestions right and, and i think it's it's pretty good there's also a lot more other features like like i said the grammarly go and these are all being developed for the premium version but for me these were the three that that helped me move there so anyway if you enjoyed this video if you got value out of it please consider 
buying Grammarly Premium through my affiliate link in this YouTube description below. It helps support the efforts in creating all of these comparison and review videos on our YouTube channel. And we'll be very, very grateful if you do that. It won't obviously come at any extra charge for you. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments and I will try my level best to answer all questions in there. If you want to follow our journey, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and I wish you a wonderful day ahead. Take care.